It is Monday, March 20th. It's the first day of spring, and this is a special edition of the Zogby Report, Real and Unscripted. We're coming to you from our respective homes, and I'll remind you uh, that you're seeing me sort of in a shadow because um, uh, it is sunny outside, and that's what happens. Um, it's sunny outside where you are, but I've got the 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 morning exposure here, Jeff. How are you doing? You know, I'm good. How about you? I'm doing well. And like you, I got some things on my mind. And so let's let's get to it, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm I'm just gonna lay this out. All right. Um, I believe in the rule of law. I believe no matter whether you're king or queen, president or former president, you must answer to a higher authority. Uh, I believe, and I have said this before, historians may not judge Donald Trump as the worst president that we've ever had, but I do believe that they will ultimately judge him as the worst person ever to have been president of, of the United States. Um, he has, and I'm just going to quickly rattle this off, um, he has changed the tone and the nature of our politics, taking it to places that I never even thought before were possible. He has enabled uh, white supremacy. He has enabled misogyny. He has enabled some of the worst elements of our nation and not only enabled them, but put them in a coalition with legitimate uh, conservatives. He has a, a following at or around 42%, which doesn't necessarily make him untouchable, but it does make it very hard to touch him. Uh, like Jello, hard to put a fork into it and have that and get a fork full. But the, the truth is that in his case, uh, if you go after him, um, like Jello, it's very, very hard to to nail down and in fact thrives on being a victim uh, and rallies his base to, to that end. The trouble that I'm having is that yes, Donald Trump, if the grand jury and the facts warrant it, should be indicted. And I trust that the uh, DA's office in Manhattan has the proof uh, that's required at least to indict him at this stage. I would assume that it sounds like there may be other indictments of a more serious nature on, on election fraud, inciting riot, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Taking him at his word, Donald Trump, that is, it seems like I, I've read what everybody else has read, that he will be indicted sometime this week, not necessarily Tuesday, but sometime this week. My only question is, politically, as well as legally, is this the best place to start? Paying off his attorney, who initially paid off a porn star, Stormy Daniels, to hide an affair, um, tracing the money then a misuse of, of money, of hush money, at least a misdemeanor, and we'll have to wait and see if there will come a federal felony crime out of this. Well, again, I don't know. But uh, in turn, and this is my final point, former President Trump has called on his followers to protest. And we know that didn't work out so well for this country uh, two years ago, January 6th, 2021. Um, is, is this the best place to start in terms of indicting Trump? Do you agree with anything or disagree with anything I've just said? Well, I, I have to, you know, I have to be an analyst and, and I have to try and, and, and be accurate and if I'm going to to be accurate and step away from this and be objective, to me, it, it's like, you know, 
if you've ever seen somebody with an, a, a nasty boil that, that gets infected and when the infection starts spreading, it's, it's visible, you know, whether it's on somebody's arm or somebody's leg, it almost has those tentacles of, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, which, which is the infection spreading. Trump is the boil. There, there's systemic rot beneath. Uh, Trump, in other words, is a symptom. He, he's not the root of the problem. And uh, I believe that very much so. The root of the problem is, is political warfare. Mm -hmm. And um, w this nation has been heading in that direction for 20 years. And I think, uh, by and large, the political warfare is a result of political theater. And the, the grand stage is, is um, the 24 hours, uh, seven days a week, 365 days a year media cycle that does not present um, both sides or multiple sides that are in the public interest, but rather have an agenda. The, the, the media complex has a very narrow uh, viewpoint of, of what is allowable opinion. And there's no freedom of information. There's no free flow of information. And so Americans ha have been locked into the system that keeps feeding itself and metastasizing. And, and this is where we're at as a result. And so I'm looking at what I've been reading over the weekend. And let's just assume that Donald Trump will, will be arrested. I mean, he's preparing for it. He's motioning his base to prepare for it. And so we'll go with that. When that happens, we will then see the next level of political theater. Um, somebody said to me over the weekend, they called it a digital coliseum. I think that's perfect. This is bread and circus uh, uh, in the digital age. And it will be the next level of, of political warfare. Why would you take a, a, a man who has a cult-like following and, and not only indict him, but indict him on, on the, the, the least significant um, crime or the least significant violation? I mean, really, who cares about uh, any politician and their, and their sexual behaviors until it goes to a gross point, right? Uh, until it goes to, I mean, we just assume, right, that politicians have affairs, both men and and women politicians, not just men. We know that that it's it's women too, but to go after him on this, where he has a cult like following, then takes Trump to martyrdom, and you have to ask yourself, do you really want former President Donald Trump to now become a martyr? So that's what's going to happen on the Republican end. He's going to be their martyr. And that's going to create an equal and opposite reaction from within the Democrats that's going to want blood. They smell the blood. They smell the warfare. And, and they're going to chant for, for more of it. And that is the digital coliseum. And that's where we are headed. It, it is part uh, network. It is part political hunger games. And we are being lured further and further down this path. Meanwhile, we have the backdrop of the 2008 financial crisis 2.0. Remember, in March of 2008, Bear Stearns went down. Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank are Bear Stearns of, of, of 2008. And more to come as people are feeling very panicky about uh, where their money is goes so th this is 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 a path that i i think um we don't want to go down and i but i think the upshot to it is that there is potential for a smart person for a smart candidate to 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 build a coalition around um maybe independent voters and voters within in the republican party who, who don't want to go this path and voters within the Democratic Party who don't want to go down this path. I don't I don't know how that, that of course, would have to have a lot of money behind it. But um, that, I, I would say I would open like that. And, and I think we can dissect that more from from here.
So what I'm troubled about is, and I don't dis really disagree with you, but I, I'm troubled once again by the hypocrisy factor um, that we go back to Bill Clinton and, um, and Monica Lewinsky. And I will say readily that <clears throat> that wasn't simply um, a sexual peccadillo on the part of a president who had already had a, a, a reputation. It was a CEO taking advantage of a young intern, albeit of age, 21 years old at the time. But um, it, it is the sort of thing that is not only frowned upon in the workplace, but these days is actually prosecuted and cause for removal in, in the workplace uh, with the Me Too movement. But um, Democrats, even those House leaders, some of whom I spoke to privately, who could not stand Bill Clinton, rallied around him. Um, and on the other hand, the Republicans who went after him, including Lindsey Graham, released reports that were salacious, um, that were Fifty Shades of, of Grey plus um, as official documents. It was a, an embarrassing, humiliating, unnecessary uh, exercise. Uh, and of course, it failed. Um, in this instance, I'm getting at the same thing, except the two parties have switched. And so now it's... Democrats who are going after, as you point out, do I really care about Stormy Daniels? Frankly, very few people cared about Stormy Daniels until um, she got all this publicity. She was, you know, an aged, aging porn star. But bottom line is, uh, here we go down this road again, and the moral outrage has shifted in a partisan way. Um, but again, rather than ask the question, I'm going to state the answer. This is not the place to go after Donald Trump. Election fraud, no, election tampering is. The phone calls to the Georgia Secretary of State and to Georgia election officials, that's the stuff uh, of which, you know, financial dealings as a um, uh, a family corporation and as an individual. Um, this selective morality, um, this going after the seemingly trivial, um, this setting Democrats up for failure on this, because mm -hmm. even if he, well, assume he's indicted, even if he's convicted, is this what you ultimately want to get paying off uh, a, a porn star um, you know, or paying off a lawyer and misuse of funds, uh, it, it, it just seems tawdry to me. Yeah. And, and like I said, meanwhile, we're looking down the barrel of, um, of, of the next level economic crisis. Yes. We've already had two bank runs and, and this is, this is what, what is now going to, compete to take top story and uh, i, I want to talk about the 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 coming economic crisis because yeah please do you know, um i mean we we know from polling that if inflation in the economy is is by far the top issue it's going to become the top issue even more so and th there's going to be no way to you know to i, I th there'll be that'll be the tier one issue There'll be tier two issues, but but I think all eyes are are on the economy, and it's going to happen more and more. But you know what's what's amazing is, I, and I, I I I went on the Real Clear Politics this morning, and one of the top stories was Kevin Warsh, who is former um, governor of the the New York Fed, who who, who actually played a big role in the 2008 financial crisis, you know, he was a liaison between Wall Street banks and the, and the New York Fed. And actually, he's, he's the one who came up, his brainchild was quantitative easing. And, you know, he candidly speaks about how 
he came up with that idea because of his unique position between uh, governor or, or as a li liaison before he was a NY Fed governor, but a working be between the NY Fed and the banks, he presented the idea of quantitative easing to Ben Bernanke, to which Ben Bernanke uh, allegedly replied, so we're going to become a banana republic because quantitative easing essentially was debt monetization. It, it was a, a very fancy, um, convoluted way of monetizing debt, bond buying, and ejecting money, liquidity into the system, which the big banks got first. And that is how the stock market was able to, to go through the roof over the years, because these, these banks got access to the money. It was then lent out to the system. And over time, it would filter through the American economy and it would raise prices. And I mean, of course, things took a, a new level with COVID and then more money was injected in, into the system. But th this has its roots in bad monetary policy, which even precedes the 2008 crisis, lowering interest rates. Um, mis he, Kevin Walsh actually uses the term misallocation of, of capital in his, uh, his article in the Wall Street Journal this morning, which is called, We Need an Economic Regime Change. And so the mindset is very key. This is the key point here, is you're gonna hear a lot of these individuals who played a role in exacerbating the crisis, ignoring their role in exacerbating the crisis and, and shifting our gears towards some kind of, this is the buzzword, economic regime change. Meanwhile, just weeks ago, the New York Fed piloted um, a central di uh, digital currency test run. And so wh what it looks to be is the higher ups at the Federal Reserve and advisors in that, in that group are already laying the foundation for what they believe will save the system. But we have to ask a very basic question. If you participated in exacerbating the system and the problem, how are you going to have the solution? And so smart candidates are, are going to have a monumental task to take the number one issue that is economy and, the, and inflation and come up with a real plan how to deal with it. Because if they don't, um, the, the, the folks at the Fed are, are going to have that plan. And I just don't think that they should go anywhere near a plan for the reasons I laid out. I'm trying, I'm struggling, as I have many times in my conversations with you and, and others, to come up with how that regime change takes place, how that systemic change takes place. Um, do we go full on deregulation? Do we go full on regulation? Do we go on full on um, taking over um, and uh, and and directing a, a banking system and hence an economy? I don't know. Uh, each way I look, what it leads to is. Um, immense dislocation and an mm -hmm. immense amount of suffering you tighten up money i know we're 32 trillion dollars but if you tighten up the money supply you raise interest rates even more you print nothing or, or less money then you have people who are in middle class on the margins and those who are on the margins um dropping down a social class, um, and that's just simply not a solution. On the other hand, if you go the uh, regulation reform route, you and I both know the history of regulation in this country is that they choose the experts in banking, in this case, or the experts in, um, in meat, or experts in oil, and who are those experts? They're the people who are in the leadership of the largest companies in the industry because they're the ones who know what happens there. You put a lot of the smaller businesses, in this case, the smaller banks, 
uh, out, out of business. And it's in the hands then of monopolists. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, I, I don't think, know. I, well, no, I mean, you had the answer in the beginning. You said rule of law. Our economic system, which is not a free market, okay? The, a free market is, is supposed to allow for small and medium-sized businesses to enter to compete. And small and medium-sized businesses are no longer a thing. They're on life support. So a, a, a free market uh, allows those, those players to be the backbone of the economy. Our system, the best way to define our system is that these large corporations that are aided by the regulatory in, in, uh, uh, agencies within their respective industry have access to all the wins, but get protected to have, uh, uh, they, they get protected against the losses. When it comes to their time, when it comes to their turn to face losses, the losses are socialized. They're put on the, on the public. And then of course, there's always the, the, the excuse that, well, it's too big to fail. Well, if it was too big to fail back then, it's going to be even more, you know, larger, uh, large to, to fail now. But what that means is, is all you're going to do is, um, is, is allow for, for these companies to, be, to become even bigger. The top five U.S. banks have assets that total to $188 trillion. That is larger than the entire world GDP. Think about that. So that is not a system that is going to allow small and medium-sized banks to, to, to foster. Actually, what's going to happen in the coming weeks is all the small and medium-sized banks are going to get centralized under the top five. And so... So these are the kind of uh, discussions that voters and candidates need to have is, is do we go to more towards a system of control with, with uh, fewer players directing it? Or do, do, do we open up the system and allow the big guys to, to tumble and, and, and then allow some kind of creative destruction? Because I don't think there's any way we can avoid this. You know, at some point, right? You have to you have to face it. And um, that's that's about as simple as I can put it. So I my final word is that, as we always say, when we're polling people, we poll people, not numbers. And yeah. so we collect that data. But that data represents real people, as does uh, public policy. So. If there are people who are going to be hurt, there are a lot of people who don't deserve to be hurt, who, who will be victims. My final, final point is I shed no tears about a Donald Trump indictment. My hope, and I mean it, is that he will be indicted for more serious charges and, and face the music. But I want to assure everyone that if we do a poll and Donald Trump is ahead by seven points or 10 points or two points, that is going to be one honest poll, just as if we come out with one showing him down two or three or five. So on one hand, we are first and foremost pollsters and accurate pollsters. This is our time on this podcast to uh, shed our personal views about things. The two don't meet. Final word, Jer? Um, no, I, I'll leave it at that. Okay. All right. Have a good week. Uh, and this was our special edition. We'll see you again. We'll see you Friday this time.